Okay, so in this video we're going to discuss um, we're going to discuss open systems. So in the last video we talked about conservation. In the last two videos we talked about conservation of energy in a system that is closed. And essentially the rule is for a closed system that the total mechanical energy is conserved. And mechanical energy is energy types that we have discussed so far. Sorry. So energy types we've discussed so far such as like potential energy from gravity, kinetic energy, and elastic potential energy. These are types of mechanical energy. And in a closed system, these are conserved. Okay? But in open system, these quantities can change because energy can enter or exit the system um, because of work being done or because of energy being lost to thermal energy by friction. Okay? And so um, the first thing I want to talk about is whenever friction does work on something, that energy is lost. Okay? And so it turns into thermal energy. And what it actually does is it changes the thermal energy because in the room that you're currently sitting in, there's a whole lot of thermal energy already, okay? The temperature of that room is really, really warm, really far away from absolute zero, okay? And so the work done by friction doesn't change it by much, but it does increase the thermal energy of the environment, okay? <laughs> and so... Um, <clears throat> that's why we use the change because it causes a change in thermal energy of kind of the environment that you're in okay and then we can also do work to increase the energy of the system and so when we set up these equations like the energy equations like we've before whenever we do work to a system so we'll have some amount of mechanical energy before we'll have some amount of mechanical energy after anytime that we add energy to a system, we're going to put that as work on the left side of the equation. And anytime the system loses energy, either by work or by thermal energy, work done by friction, we're going to put that on the right side. Okay, so energy lost on the right side, energy gained on the left side. Okay, and this is how basically this the modification we'll make to our problem solving to allow us to account for these things okay and so let's go ahead and look at some examples of how we might use this so let's go ahead and give this a try okay so let's say that we have this block that we're going to drop it's a two kilogram block we're going to drop it from five meters and when it hits the ground we would expect its velocity to be about nine point eight meters per second because of acceleration from gravity but it's not let's say that instead it has a velocity of about seven meters per second when it hits the ground okay and so how could we account for this difference what why isn't it going as fast as we predicted it would be what what could have interfered here and so what we can say is well some of the energy was lost to thermal energy probably from air resistance okay and if, if we said that this was a closed system, we would just say this is how fast it's going to be going at the end. But in an open system where things like air resistance and friction are present, then energy is going to be lost, and we have to figure out a way to account for that. And so in this case, energy is lost to thermal energy because of the air present. That it was basically as this fell, there's air particles in the way. It pushed them out of the way and increase the thermal energy of the environment. Okay, so if we were to set this up, we would say, okay, well, looking at our energy charts, we start off with some amount of gravitational potential energy. Again, the number of boxes, totally arbitrary. And we're going to end up with kinetic energy, but there's slightly less. Now, we have to account for the fact that some of this energy is now gone, and the way that we do that is we're going to say that some of the energy left, in this case in the form of one box, as thermal energy. Okay. 
And so the way that we'll write this equation, we could say, all right, on the right hand or the left side, we have gravitational potential energy. On the right side, we have kinetic energy. And then we're going to add over here thermal energy or a change in thermal energy caused by the air resistance. Okay, we're putting it on the right side because it's energy leaving the system. And now we can actually solve for how much thermal energy left into the environment knowing how fast it was going at the end and what how much energy it started with. Okay, and so we plug those values in and we'll get and so we find out that about 49 joules of energy were lost to the environment. Okay, and so when when this happens then things are getting warmer and so you can think about like when you rub your hands together okay so if you go ahead and rub your hands together you're going to feel them getting warmer well that's because energy is being lost you're doing work and giving your hands energy and the, your hands have kinetic energy but that energy has to go somewhere and so in this case when you rub your hands together it's going into your hands okay um, let's let's do a couple other examples now where we see thermal energy so the next one we're going to look at is we have a block released from a two meter ramp and it slides onto a rough surface below. The surface has a coefficient of kinetic friction of 0.3. And the question is how far does the block slide? Okay, so we have a picture here of a block on the top of a big tall ramp. Okay, it's going to slide down the ramp and there's going to be a rough surface below. And the question is how far does it slide? Okay, well, we've kind of done questions like this in class already, but we'll say, okay, we have some amount of gravitational potential energy at the beginning, and it's going to slide until it comes to a stop at the bottom, so at the end, there's no energy left because the kinetic energy is all gone, and that means we lost these one, two, three, four blocks of potential energy to thermal energy, it left the system because this is a open system. Okay, so we can set this up as an equation, and we can say, okay, well, on the left side we have mgh. On the right side we have energy lost to thermal energy. Well, this was done because friction did work on it, so we can replace this with work done by friction. Okay which we know is equal to the frictional force times the displacement. Okay, and so frictional force is going to be mu times mg. And so when we plug all this stuff in, we get that our potential energy on the left side is going to be equal to mu times m times g times delta x. Okay. And these two will drop out, and so H would be equal to mu times delta X. Okay, so if we divide 2 by 0.3, we get that delta X would be equal to about 6.7 meters. Okay, and so here's this is kind of taking what we learned, what we're learning this chapter, and what we learned last chapter, and bringing them together. Okay, so we started off with gravitational potential energy, we could kind of even graph this. So if we graph if this line represents potential gravitational potential energy over distance, it'd be like this. Okay, so this would be gravitational potential energy. And then kinetic energy would be like this. And then like this, because in this case, that kinetic energy it's increasing from the potential energy, but at the bottom of the ramp, all of a sudden that kinetic energy is being turned into thermal energy from the work done by friction. Okay, <clears throat> and so not to confuse that this line right here is separate from this line right there. Okay, um, and so even though kinetic energy took was present at some point, since we're only comparing the beginning and the end, the kinetic energy is never present in any of these comparisons.